<laughs> Today on Rescue Vet, a Labrador retriever is struck by a car over the weekend. His owner makes a two-hour trek to veterinary specialty care for emergency surgery. Will Dr. Bianucci be able to make the drive worthwhile, or is it too late to help? A soft-coated Wheaton Terrier is brought to Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital due to rapid weight loss. Will Dr. Mayers determine the prognosis to be fatal, or will it be something entirely unexpected? Fran Humphreys has driven two hours from Conway, South Carolina to veterinary specialty care in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina with his three-year-old black Labrador retriever, Manning. Over the weekend, Manning was hit by a car. Manning has been unable to stand since the accident and appears to be in pain. Dr. Bianucci was recommended by Fran's local veterinarian for his surgical expertise. We know that it happened early in the morning. Um, I actually wasn't at home had gotten out of the kennel and uh, gotten into the street, uh, was struck in his, uh, his hindquarters and had drug himself back up into the yard and under the back deck. Um, some neighbors heard him and they called. And it could have been easily eight hours. It went by from the point that he was struck until uh, the time I was able to get there to him. Saturday was, was one of the most difficult days you can any you imagine when you don't know. If it was a spinal break, we were you know, we, we just weren't going to have him. I just couldn't imagine, you know, putting, uh, putting him down. And, you know, and I've got kids who love my dog, too. So it's, um, you know, it would have been very difficult. Hey, how are you guys? Good, how are you? I looked at the x-rays this weekend. Um, how did this happen? Car. I think we hit by a car. Yeah, did y'all see it happen? No, I wasn't even home. Okay. So, so you just found him? He had, he had drug himself into the yard and, and asked him we got the call and came to him this poor fella yeah. hey sweet guy has he stood up at all no, he no, sat no. he sat in the back of the truck on the way here but okay is he moving his back legs yes he scared us to death he's a beautiful dog um i'll tell you what i really want to do um let's put this thing on the floor okay Come over this way, and we'll go right here. Okay. It's all right, buddy. I'm right here. Dr. Bianucci slowly raises Manning to his feet to see if he is able to support his own weight. That's a good sign. That's good. He's withdrawing it normally, and he's not knuckling over on it, so okay. that's good. Let's just make sure this side's doing the same. Manning's reflexes are slow, which means one of his legs is definitely injured a little slow, but I'm not sure if that's if that's real or not. All right, let's lay him down now. It's all right. Easy it's there, all right. man. After testing Manning's back legs, Dr. Bianucci examines his front legs, which both appear to be functioning normally. Okay, his front legs feel fine. I'm sure bearing weight fine. That's good he's holding that up the way he is. So, you know, the good thing is, um, I don't see any sign of, uh, of thoracic trauma. The lungs look clear. This is the heart. It looks like a normal size. We don't have any uh, disruption to the diaphragm, which can happen after they get hit by a car. Chest looks good. Um, from a neurologic standpoint, um, I think we're okay. We've got a fracture that's going to be a little bit of a tricky one um, to repair. What it looks like we've got uh, is a fracture right through the acetabulum. The acetabulum is the cup, okay? Yes. And so this fracture goes right through that and then it's got a spike that goes forward. So this is in a spot where we're gonna be way better off fixing it than not. Now we really have, uh, we have a few other fractures here, but really the only one we need to fix is this one. And we're gonna line that up 
put a plate, like kind of a round plate over the top there, mm -hmm. screw it down, and, and that's it. During the recovery process, Manning's mobility will be limited. No running, jumping, or rough play will be allowed. Nothing more than what it takes to get up, go outside, go to the bathroom, and come back in. The way he's gonna get out there is you're gonna put a little sling under his belly, okay, and give him some support out, okay, take him to where he's gonna go, let go of the sling, just stand there with the leash, let him do his stuff, bring him back in. Overall, you know, I think, it may not seem like it, but I think actually he got kind of lucky. When he first came in, he didn't appear to have any sensation in his hindquarters. Mm. And and we'd heard from a neighbor that he drug himself, drug his hind in. You know. oh, so, yeah, I was, guy. we were really, really scared. But we will keep him comfortable and we'll get a chest x-ray and make sure that, you know, we don't have any reason to not be doing surgery or to be treating something else, right. okay? Yeah. Well, it was nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you, okay. so Thank you um, for taking us. Well, you're more than welcome. That's what we're here for. Manning was hit by a car. It's been three nights now since he was hit, so the likelihood is that uh, that any acute problems that were uh, that were related to that that injury, other than the uh, the fracture, w would have really revealed themselves by now. So his breathing is fine. He's stable. His you know his cardiovascular system is is fine. His respiratory system's fine. He's going to be with us tonight, just getting his pain medications and getting ready to go to surgery in the morning. He's a good companion. He's uh, he's a member of the family. So you know, I love him and I want him to get better. I love you, son. Thanks. Manning will be put on pain medication and kept overnight. To make sure nothing has changed in Manning's lungs, he will have blood work and a chest x-ray taken. If all goes well, he'll have surgery the following day. At Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital, Dr. Mayers and her staff are trying to determine what is causing a seven-year-old soft-coated Wheaton Terrier to lose weight at an alarming rate. We're getting our diagnostics done today. We did her blood pressure. We looked underlying Lyme disease, tick-borne diseases, and those all came back normal. We ran a urinalysis, and the concentration of the urine is very dilute, and she's losing protein. And because of the breed of dog she is, we're very concerned because they're prone to getting a disease known as protein-losing nephropathy or protein-losing enteropathy, where they leak protein out. And unfortunately, it's a very poor prognosis with this. Traditionally, upon diagnosis, it's a six-month survival rate. We did chest x-rays and abdominal x-rays, and we did an abdominal ultrasound to try and find the underlying cause of this. An ultrasound is the next step in trying to determine the cause of Olive's weight loss. Here's your teddy bear. Here's your teddy bear. When you perform an ultrasound, you shave all the hair because ultrasound is using sound waves. And I have a little probe that takes the sound waves and goes through the body and gets reflected by the organs inside the body. That wave gets reflected back to the probe and then forms an image on the ultrasound machine. So we were looking through the whole abdominal tract. We were looking at the liver and the kidneys and the stomach and the intestinal tract just to see where we're finding some abnormalities so we can find out what the underlying cause is. So now we're just waiting to see what the ultrasound results come back as. Manning is getting prepped at veterinary specialty care for pelvic surgery. Fur is shaved down as close to the skin as possible to prevent any type of bacteria from entering the incision. The area is also cleared for any IV catheters or pain medication that may need to be inserted. Dr. Bianucci prepares to go into surgery by scrubbing his hands and arms and covering himself from head to toe to prevent infection from occurring during surgery.
So what we're doing here, we're making a kind of a lateral approach to the hip joint. Okay, the fracture that you can see on the on the X-ray is what we call an acetabular fracture, kind of part of the part of the pelvis and specifically the hip joint is fractured. So we need to go in and uh, we need to approach that and realign that hip joint. A plate will be put on the hip joint to hold it in place, acting as an internal splint. This fracture is of a joint surface, and so the repair has to be perfect. Can't be kind of put the bones in the neighborhood because uh, it just needs to be that the joint surface is lined up well. This surgery will probably take us, uh, I'm hoping maybe an hour and a half is we may need to cut some additional bone in order, in order to be able to access it. So, so we might wind up having to cut, cut part of the top of that femur um, so we can actually get down to this fracture. So I'm hoping I won't have to do that. Not, not because it's a big deal, and it's an additional fracture that you create that has to heal. It's been a few months since Olive's initial diagnostics took place, and today, Olive is back at Bees Ferry with her owner, Dottie, for a follow-up exam. Initially, she came because she was becoming lethargic, not eating well. She was losing weight, and she was just very um, not herself, just laying around. We were quite concerned when she came in initially on presentation because soft-coated wheat and terriers can get um, some serious diseases such as protein-losing enteropathies, protein-losing nephropathies, and those come with a very grave prognosis. And I was really upset because she's my little, my little girl and I'd heard about that disease before and I'd actually known someone who had a wheat and who had died from it, so I was really concerned. I was trying not to think the worst and just hoping that they would come up with something else. I was bringing her in quite regularly and um, they were checking her, checking her weight and, and I was bringing her urine in and within three weeks I think she finally had it knocked down to what was going to help her. Thank goodness after the thorough workup that we did, we found out that her diagnosis was inflammatory bowel disease. Now, traditionally you can't cure inflammatory bowel disease, but you can manage it through diet and certain medications. And today she came in for her recheck and she's gained weight and she's thriving and she's doing wonderful. So we have this disease well managed. And I didn't want to get my hopes up too, too much, but it was, I was really excited. Although it appears that Olive is doing better and on her way to recovery, Dottie has discovered something new that she is concerned about. Olive's owner, Dottie, is about to see Dr. Mayers to follow up on Olive's current state of health. However, Dottie is concerned about an abnormality she has discovered on Olive. So how's Olive been doing since her last visit here? She's been doing great. Well, I see she's gained weight and she's eating well. Yeah, she's eating great. One of the reasons why I wanted to see her today too is because she's got like some kind of a, some lump. A lump? Yeah. And when did you notice the lumps? Um, probably maybe two weeks ago. They're on this, let's see this one right side and the left one. It's pretty much in the same place on oh, the yeah. other side. And it doesn't seem to bother her? Mm-mm. Okay. All right, she will take a look at those lumps also. All right. Well, hang on and she'll be with you in just a second. All right, second. thanks. Surgery is going as planned at Veterinary Specialty Care, and Dr. Bianucci is almost finished applying a plate which will be used to stabilize Manning's fractured hip. So we're in pretty good shape here, I think. Probably gonna need to cut that back a little bit more. I think we got it. There's a plate on there. Feels good, no grinding. 
X-rays demonstrate that the plate implant has been well placed and the fracture realignment is a nearly perfect reconstruction. Dr. Bianucci is pleased with the results and is optimistic this will lead to a full recovery. Um, this should do very well. This is lined up nicely and, um, and again visually during surgery we actually looked at the joint surface and we could see that that at least along that dorsal rim, the top rim of the hip, which is up along here, uh, it was perfectly opposed. So it's good. Yeah, very happy with that. After the surgery, Manning is monitored by veterinary technicians to make sure he recovers from the anesthesia safely. Once he is awake, he is carefully moved to the ICU, where he will stay overnight. The 24-hour staff will administer his pain medication, monitor his vital signs, and keep him company until he is ready to go home. Hey, Olive, how are you? Did you okay today? Hey, baby. She's gained weight. Yeah. She looks good. Oh, is that the spot? Is that a good spot right there? Okay, let's take a look. And you found some new lungs on her? Yeah. Okay. The lumps on Olive could be one of two things, tumors or fat buildup. Dr. Mayers will not know what the prognosis is until she does a thorough examination. Let's take a look, okay? Oh, I know. Oh, first face. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're such a good girl. Look at that face. There you are, Miss Olive. Let's look in your eyes. That looks fine. Not even earwax. That looks good. Let's see this ear. Thanks, Miss Olive. Good girl. Okay, let's see those chompers. Ready to show your teethies? Aside from some tartar buildup on her teeth, Olive appears to be in good health. Beautiful. Mm. Okay, let's feel your belly. Her heart rate and breathing sound normal, which immediately is a good sign. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Yeah. All right, well, let's investigate these lumps and find out what they are. So what I'm going to do is a, what's known as a fine needle aspirate. I'm going to stick a needle, get some cells, and look it under the microscope. And most of the time, I can tell you right away what it is. In order to determine if the lumps are malignant or benign, Dr. Mayers removes a cellular sample from the lumps using a needle. This process is called aspirating. Okay, I'll have one more poke, and then that's it. Good girl. Great girl. Dottie anxiously waits to hear Olive's prognosis while Dr. Mayers reviews the samples under a microscope. Dr. Mayers is reviewing samples from Olive's lumps to determine if they are tumors or benign lumps of fatty tissue called lipoma. Under the microscope, I saw fat molecules. So this is what's known as a lipoma. A lipoma is a benign mass just made up of fat conglomerating. And dogs tend to get them on the sides and under the abdomen. But you never know what a mass is until you stick a needle in it, aspirate it, and look at it under the microscope. So there's no reason to do anything about this mass. It may get bigger over time, but I would leave it completely alone. Having a lipoma is great news for Olive. She's already been through a significant amount of disease recently um, getting her diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease and she seems to be well recovered and on her way she's gaining weight she's thriving she's doing fantastic so I'm so pleased that Olive is doing great and um, hopefully we'll only see her back for her wellness checks but I think curbing down on the amount of food that we're giving her will make a difference and our scales always here for you so in a month let's reweigh her and just make sure that she's not precipitously gaining she went from one end <laughs> to, to the other, but I, I'd rather her gain than lose like she did, so that's good. With Olive's weight at a healthy level and the fear of a tumor off the table, Dottie and Dr. Mayers are extremely relieved. She's my only child. I mean, she is my child. But I don't know what I'd do without her. I mean, she's, she's my baby, and she makes me laugh. It's such a delight when you can get through these things and, and the owner is pleased and the dog is doing quite well and it just warms my heart and puts a smile on my face. So that's what it's all about is, is getting the owners happy and the, and the pet happy and then I'm happy too. Olive, you're such a good girl. I love you.
It's been a day since Manning's surgery. He is still on pain medication, but he appears to be well on his way to recovery. I'm going to miss you. Be a good man, okay? Mm -hmm. His owner, Fran, has made the two-hour drive from Conway to pick him up and take him back home where Manning will need about a month to fully heal. You're such a brave boy. Yeah. Oh, you got a crew cut too, just in time for summer. What a good fella. Look at you, you're gonna be so cool. I think dad's more excited about your haircut. It's a, good, <laughs> the whole dog if you it's a, it's a good look, son. Manning went home today doing very well. Very comfortable, he was, uh, from a system standpoint, he was very stable. Um, and from the, uh, you know, with respect to his fracture, he was very, he was reasonably comfortable. You're looking good. Unless you are looking, I've missed you terrible, I have. I have. Glad to have him back. He looks good. Um, I think he's, I just didn't know what to expect when I got him back, but he seems alert and excited to see me, so that's a good thing. Come on, let's go in, buddy. Let's go in there. With you. Easy, 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 easy. Sit, 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 sit. He's kind of now on the road to healing. You know, we say the race is on between that implant failing and the fracture healing, and it's going to come down to how quiet they keep him and how you know quickly the healing progresses. But my anticipation is that he's going to do, uh, that he's going to get good function out of that hip. About a week where he'll be in the sling that he's in, and in a month or so, he should be well on his way. They expect uh, you know, full range of motion and, and a full recovery, so can't ask for any more. He was happy to see me, yeah, which is a good thing. Yeah, so you, he's got a lot of personality, and he's, he's, it's still intact.